Hey, it's Pete Carmesino here at Chaken Analytics. This is our weekly Chaken Power Feed video series. And today I'm just going to talk about one company, actually two companies that are in one specific area of the automobile segment, and that's electric vehicles. And the first one is Ford. We just recently wrote an article about that on the Power Feed. Go over there and check it out. And it's just talking about how Ford was really struggling, you know, with this F-150 Lightning uh, truck that they were trying to sell, an electrified truck, obviously electric, you know, vehicle truck. Last year, they sold about 24,000 vehicles. That's about 3% of the company's total F-series truck sales. That's nothing. Now, look, they are not looking any better this year. They told dealers they're going to be cutting back on production. And they're, you know, obviously not looking great for Ford. And they could be paying out about $35 million to a specific set of employees just to stop the work on the F-150 Lightning production. Okay. so. If you dig into that a little bit, you can understand what, what's going on. Go check the article out. We're going to look at the chart, but there's another stock I want to bring up as well. And this is specifically an electric vehicle maker, and it ain't Tesla. It's Rivian, another truck type manufacturing company that I have called out many times as really junk. The stock has been dead money for years. And I wrote about it uh, back in December of 2022 when the NASDAQ 100 decided to put it in their index. I said it was a virtue signaling act. It was really irresponsible. The stock has been losing billions of dollars a year. And Ford, smartly, is maybe looking on the other side and saying, well, Rivian can't do it. How, how are we going to do it? We're going to cut our losses right now, at least slow that production down. And we'll look at both stocks to see how they're reacting to the news. But something happened today with Rivian. Where do you see this? All right. We're here looking at the Ford chart. And I had talked about the article. And I'm just kind of only some pieces of information from it. I would encourage you to read the whole thing. Go to PowerFeed, jakeandpowerfeed.com and check it out. But, you know, you're starting to break down that number. $35 million is, you know, just simple math. You can figure out that it's cutting uh, staff for the F-150 Lightning production by about two thirds, right? It's about 700 workers or so. They're going to transition to a different assembly plant and they're going to be working on a different product, a different series of truck. But here's what's happening. It's very interesting. Now, even in the sell-off here in the markets that we've seen, we're recovering a little bit today, but it's kind of a flat market across, except for the NASDAQ actually up about you know over 1%. That's kind of snuck up on me. I wasn't expecting to see that. So this is great news. But you see a stock that's trying to recover. So I'm not saying it's a great stock because it's a neutral rated company right now, right? It's something that the power gauge has been telling you to avoid for quite some time. If I go to the five-year chart, this stock has been dead money. I mean, dead money for a long time. It's been a sideways action. It has its fits and starts. It just can't continue. You see some losses here. You see some beats on the earnings per share, but you're just not getting, you're getting a range bound stock. that's just not in trend with the broader markets at the moment. Now that could be changing, but it is way too early to tell. When you look at the one year chart, you're seeing some, you know, signs of life here. But again, the power gauge was largely correct in telling you to avoid the stock. But I'll tell you where it was really correct. If you really want to see dead money, you really want to see where you could have been, you know, making massive mistakes on a company because they added it to the NASDAQ 100, I don't know, around this December timeframe into a downtrend. We were already bearish. It was our first rating on the stock. It got bullish for a very short time. I would say it looks longer than it is, but it's been mostly bearish and in a downtrend. And what did I say happened today? Well, I made a prediction back in December of 2022, but I wouldn't be surprised the stock would be trading in single digits. Well, it's at $9.58 as I record. I don't know if it's going to close there, but I'm happy to see the prediction come true. I'm very unhappy to see if anybody's been losing money in this. We tried to warn you several times on a stock like this. Now, the power gauge was in tune with this. Even on the up moves, it did have some opportunity here. You know, there were upgrades here and people were jumping on the bandwagon. But folks, you cannot deny that this stock has just been losing not millions of dollars, but billions. In December of 2022, they had about $14 billion on their balance sheet. Well, they don't anymore. And the problem is, it's obviously just not selling enough trucks. And the folks that are looking to buy these things are getting sticker shock right away. And if you do buy one and you have the ability to own one, you certainly do not want to get one fixed. If something goes wrong with it, it is extremely expensive. There are some electric vehicles out there that we saw out in the news that were going at half price, half price, because it's just a narrative that 
obviously looks good on paper, but to produce it and maintain it and things of that nature, it's just too expensive at the moment. Technology just isn't there yet. But I'll tell you what is. The power gauge recognized both of these stocks as two to avoid, specifically Rivian and Ford. All right, everybody, thanks again for tuning in. This is our Chaken Power Feed video series. We kind of bring some of these articles to life. And I, look, I talked about a few different ones. And, you know, the specific one in the past week, April 5th, was on Ford. And a couple of ones that I wrote were back uh, as far back as December of 2022. And most recently in February, where I called Rivian an illusionist on Wall Street, because I think they're just giving people the illusion that things are okay. But that's not what we see on the charts. And it's certainly not what the power gauge saw either. All right, we'll be back next week with another Jake and Power Feed video series. Take care. I'll see you then.